China. Are you doing it from, like from the venue? Yeah. Oh, here we go. We start. Uh, yep. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the Rear All Suites Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas. It's day two of the Rums of Puerto Rico Women's Las Vegas Open. And our first match of the day is a loser side qualification encounter between Jasmine Ocean and Margaret Fefilova Style. We're playing 10 ball, of course, it's two races to four. It's cool shot and calling the shots with me in the booth for this one is the smiling, sweet talking Dutchman. Tim De Reuter. Good morning, Tim. Good afternoon. Hey, man. What's up? Good match here. Yeah, yeah and it's loser it goes home. It's loser qualification. Both have a loss to their name. The referee getting the balls ready. Lots of other matches going on as well at the same time. It's the ladies' round at the moment, so we'll keep you up to date with all the scores as well as they happen. There's Jasmine. Will be difficult from Austria. Difficult to pick a winner in this match. Based on the recent yeah. form, some people would think Margaret is a favourite. But Jasmine does have a lot of experience and also has been dominating the European circuit for quite some time. Well, scratch. Not an ideal start for Margaret Steyer. And she's really, you just mentioned her form Tim and she's had some really good form lately. She's been playing the WPBA tour. She's actually risen to number four on the WPBA ranking list. So results, she's had a few semi-finalists. I think she had one final as well, I believe. So she's really risen up the rankings. Anyway, it's about Jasmine now, ball in hand and everything in the open, Tim. What do you see? Yeah, I gotta say, the two ball to the three ball is, is a tough one. It's uh, really difficult. And then as well has to play the 3-7 combo. I think there's a small issue with the shot clock. So Jasmine just asking like, do I wait or can I go? That's the reason why she sat down. Of course, it would be not so nice for her to, for Margaret to play on. Yeah, if I look at the layout, yeah, yeah. the 3-7 seven, seven is such a tough combo, a lot of distance in between. This is actually a good view to look at the layout. And yeah, to get close to that three ball as well is, is a toughie. I believe if you can if you can get to the center of the table from the two to the three and make the combo, four, five, six is pretty much linked. Yeah, it shouldn't be too crazy after just all the work around the two, three, four. Unless she goes. I was going to say, unless she goes around the four ball, two rails or three rails shaped to the three. No, I don't think so. It will be long combo. Well, that shot clock issue has been sorted out and it gave Jasmine a nice opportunity to survey the table and work out the best route and it looks like she has decided to play 
Well, having said that, Tim, she's come down to get onto it in the corner. That's not a bad shot, is it? Yeah, just the rub on the five ball got her maybe a little bit uncomfortable around the rail. But actually a lot better option than playing the combination, that's for sure. Yeah, just made the five a little bit awkward later in the rack. Oh, where's she? They've gone with the cue ball though. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Good shot. Well, she did get quite straight on the four, so might have to force follow two rails, possibly three rails, long rail, short rail, and then the bottom long rail to get something on the five ball. Don't think she can still stun off the rail. No, this is straight, has to go forward. No man's land. Well, she might play, a b if she wants to go aggressive, she can bank the five ball, it's pretty decent percentage. Two rails on the cue ball, just miss the 10. And if she catches the 10, she might still be on the six. Got to avoid the double kiss though, Tim, on this bank. No, she played the safety behind the 10, just a little bit. Then again, the same thing. She had to avoid the kiss playing that safety. And she has left half a chance for Margaret. Very serious looking Jasmine. Is this to pass the seven? That's a beauty. Very nice shot indeed. Well controlled, wasn't it, Tim? Yeah, beautiful cue ball. Minimum one reel kick, possibly two reels. Depends. She could go one reel, five ten combo. Could also go two reels and carry him the ten ball in. Two rails, she's called it inside. So trying to kick it. Long rail, short rail, past the six, obviously playing to get it safe, calling it just in case. It would be a nice fluke if she could get it. Not a bad hit. <coughs> Little better result could have went her way. Yeah, she can get behind this 10 ball for position onto the six into the same pocket. So yeah, it would be nice. Chance. Would be nice for her to still win this rack because she got pretty unlucky on the break. Cue ball got two kisses in the side, so if she had lost this rack and maybe Jasmine running one extra, maybe Margaret would feel in her chair, well, well, you know, there's nothing I could have done about it. I got two kisses and scratched. Now she can get at least square on that mistake or unlucky moment. It's gonna make her feel better. Just wondering, was always going to end up straight on this seven ball, playing the five ball the way she played. No, the six ball, excuse me, the six, how she's played it. Does have a, a very, very big stroke, much like husband Tyler. Cute, pretty similar. Big fans of the Johan Raising elbow drop. Yeah, perfect speed as well. So close on the eight. Has to be careful. Try to stay close and give yourself something to work with on the nine. Doesn't want to have too much angle. So either straight or small angle would work. I think she got. I think she got perfect for straight draw.
actually done. Just slightly overdone it. So a little bit of a test up. Doesn't want to hit it too hard. Cue ball tracking towards this bottom left hand corner, maybe. She might have gone too far. This is a tough cut. And watch the cue ball. Yeah. If I cue shoot this one, I do. Oh. Where's the cue ball? The Where's cue the ball? cue ball it's going? Gonna if it's got the pace, it's going to go. It's in. Oh. It's in. It's in. It started with a scratch, Tim, and it ended with a scratch. Margaret Pfeffel over, scratching off the break, and then right on the last ball as well. So the easiest of tappings for Jasmine Ocean, and she takes it. Now remember, Tyler Steyer in the World 8 ball a couple of years back in Puerto Rico on the shootout actually scratched off the shootout shot. Do you remember that, Tim, round four rails? Yeah. Yeah, and the referee yeah, just explaining to the ladies there that the 10 has to be potted. I notice Margaret was taking all the balls out of the pockets. The 10 ball has to be potted, so. Just yeah, I do understand. I do understand ahead, that Tim. Margaret, she did play the 10 ball, the cut, with a little bit more authority because if you have to hold the cue ball, most of the time you're yeah you're not that straight on the shot. So she decided to put a little bit more stroke into it, but then the cue ball was into more danger. So it was it was a matter of making the 10 and possible scratch or missing the 10 but leaving the cue ball on the table. And of course, she was not going to play safe on the tempo. She would want to have a chance to win. Trademark break. One of the biggest breakers in the women's game. Yeah, definitely is going to look for a more square break next time. Did come up dry. Roll up behind the three ball here. Well, she could have played a 110 combination and draw the cue ball behind the seven two way shot. But I feel Margaret is going to try and outmove Jasmine a little bit, make her feel more uncomfortable. Just thinking, can go one rail, medium speed. Two rails would be nice if she can, what well, looks like the three balls in the way, but two rails must be, oh, she hit this good. Nice shot from Jasmine. Yeah, might see the jump cue here, Tim, and call the full ball. And I recently did an interview with Jasmine Ocean, and we were talking about the safety side of her game, and she was saying, how much she's learned off of Albin, her brother, and says she considers Albin to be one of the top safety players and kickers in the world, and she's learned a lot from him. Well, this has opened up the two ball, or was gonna open up the two ball, unless it found the four ball again. Let's see how good Jasmine is feeling. Is she going to open up the 2-4? Or is she going to play a safety after? There's your answer. Cue ball around the angles. Hold the cue ball behind the 4. Now, is it too thin though? I was going to no, say, I don't think she can stop the cue ball there. So, cross corner. This is a one pocket shot, isn't it? Oh, this was good. And I don't think she could have played the cue ball any better. Perfect on the 3-6 combo. 
still has to yeah, still has to do something here. It's not a guaranteed combo, but at least she's on prime shape. Maybe go into the five as well, Tin, to hold the cue ball, will she? Oh, she's played well. That's a shocker. Well, we were just talking about how good her safety game is. And she's played a loose one, completely misjudged it. She was trying to play the three ball past the six and played it straight into it. So a great chance here for Margaret to level things up. Well, there's one thing though, is that of course we are using a shot clock and to see a shot is one, but to execute the shot within, what is it, 30, 35 seconds, it, it always gives a little bit extra. It's, it's really tough to do. How do you feel about the shot clock, Tim? Do you think 30 seconds is long enough, or should it be 40? What's your feeling on that no, for Tembo? I, I, I believe for Tembo it's, it's enough. But definitely it's going to make the players that have a faster decision making, it's going to favor them. So the ones with the, with the pool brain, the ones that they look at the table and instantly have a feeling, oh, this is the right shot. It's going to favor these kind of players because they have extra time to execute. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that on the WPBA tour, where the ladies play nine ball, the shot clock is actually 40 seconds. So it's a new thing for them to come and play a 10 ball tournament with just 30 seconds. I'm just, you know, just putting it out there. So a slight adjustment needed for these ladies. Well, and it's also especially what you're used to. If you practice 20 second shot clock all the time, and then you get to a tournament where there's a 30 or 40 seconds, you feel like you've got so much time to walk around and be even more detailed. But it doesn't work the other way around. If you're used to a 40 second shot clock, it's more difficult to say, okay, well, let's just cut 10 seconds off. I've experienced that myself. Some good shape so far for Margaret. Could choose to run into the rail and come back out. I think she can still hold the cue ball. Soft draw. to play the 10 into the same pocket now I think as the nine ball she could come round and play it in the bottom left as we look let's see how she plays oh. this I, I'd also like to go forward two rails and play the 10 in the side just make sure you bump the second rail softly or straight in just top left but it was either this or the two rails forward I was going to play she did get in between yeah, this is no gimme. She's already missed 110. Well, she made the 10, but unfortunately made the cue ball as well. So. Good execution. Nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah very well done i thought she was going to go in the other corner pocket but safely in and we're all level she'll be breaking winner breaks of course and each player gets to break first in a sets so if you broke first in the first set you'll the other person breaks in the second set and we're at the stage at the moment where we go to a shootout if it goes one set all but of course all that changes when we go to the single elimination stage two. I believe we're playing that in the ladies as well, Tim, right? Best of three sets? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So Let's basically just run after, around the room for you. After this match, basically, we'll extend the format. We'll bring you up to date with some latest scores after we watch this break from Margaret. Nice 
nice one in the side. Oh, work of the cue ball again, though, Tim. She's lost the cue ball for the second time. What did she do wrong there, Tim? Have we lost Tim? She played a little bit too much draw. I'm still here, I'm still here. She played a little bit of draw and didn't catch the one ball full in the face. If you look at it, a little bit of draw and not full in the face. Drawing the cue ball right in the top left corner. I thought for one second there, I'd lost Tim the Horseman because it's unlike him not to want to comment on the break. He is our break <laughs> specialist. Yeah, I'm a picky, uh, picky gentleman sometimes. So, yeah, the only good thing for Margaret is she has scratched twice on the break, but never really left an easy run out. So she, in some ways, still guarantees a visit to the table. In this case, it's all because of the six ball. Difficult to get on the six ball. Never say never but has to play either a 6-7 combo or maybe a bank on the 6-ball. Like he's going to be... Did she just call the corner? Yeah, I must go so. to she thinks it passes. Well, I think the combo is the only shot. Yeah, it must be. Nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. Now she pen, has... Potential banana skin. Yeah. She has opened up the rack. So, of course, if she gets straight on the eight, she, it will be tough to get to the nine ball, but any angle is going to be okay to work up to the nine. She did get that little bit of straight. Might be just okay to stun maybe a ball of or two towards the nine. She might be playing into the short rail and back out. No. She couldn't really get any closer. She took the medicine a little bit. Yes, yeah, could also play nicely yeah. off the rail. Could play two rails, nine to the ten, just just stun and go twice the long rail. Got to watch the scratch, of course. She floats it in. She will have a tougher ten. Oh, she did hold the cue ball. Nicely done. Nice shot on the nine ball. And it goes. The Austrian leads by two racks to one in the first set and let's just go around the room and give you some latest scores. A lady in form at the moment, Elu Kibaroglu, who just won a tournament in the States. She's 3-1 down though to Silviana Lu. Bajana Sarac is in action against Kelly Fisher and the Serbian is 2-0 up on Kelly Fisher. Shui Ching Chang is 2-0 ahead in the first set against Mighty Ripero, the Spaniard. It's Japan versus Bulgaria. Chihiro Kawahara is 2-0 down to Christina Zleteva. And Soldad Ayala has taken a 2-1 lead over Alison Fisher, who is now, of course, playing under the American flag. Playing under the Austrian flag, the very proud lady from Klagenfurt breaking off 2-1 ahead, looking to get on the hill in his first set.
Oh, cube off the table. Wow. Well, Tim, out of four breaks, we've seen three fouls. Yeah, and this is just basically it's the aiming part. It's not you, you see she puts a lot of energy. Almost every, any ball is moving on the table. But in the end, the cue ball does play a big role. That's also what a, what makes a player a great breaker is one that can put all the energy into the balls but then still have control over the cue ball. When I have to ask you the question, who is the the best breaker in all at the moment, Tim? Well, there is a couple. Um, but a guy like Shane, of course, always stands out pretty well. Mario He, good one. Petri Mekkonen, good one. Um, guys that can really hit the break super square and get unreal movement on the balls. Mark Weisterbosch, same one. Um, same thing, on, like, they have the natural ability to get that big pop on the balls and still not lose a cue ball in general. Of course it does happen to everybody, but statistically speaking. Can she go round two rails in and out of the corner to get onto this four ball into this bottom left hand corner? I am surprised she she's played over it this Chris. way. She's over hit it, Chris. Um, Chris, <laughs> Tim, she's over hit it. I was just wondering with top spin, she could have played shape for the three ball in the top right corner. Uh, the four ball, excuse me. So, a little different position than I expected her to play. Is she going to roll? try and roll up on the nine? Because it's scary on the speed. She decided to yeah, run into that nine it. ball. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure about that shot. I'm pretty sure there was different options. Could have played in behind the eight, could have gone for distance, maybe tried to get over by the six and the seven. Not sure if the bank is on here, Tim. Maybe she's going for the cut. Oh, just a safety. That's the target over behind that six ball. Well, I've got to say, it could have turned out a little bit better. A good chance for Margaret to get the cue ball to the right side of the eight in between the rail and the eight of course the object ball is going to be in the open so got to watch the cue ball quite a lot oh and she hit that really firm maybe could have spin the ball a little bit more to crawl slowly behind the eight Oh, it's a big pocket with the 10 ball there, but can she get anywhere near to the 5 ball? No, she's not interested in playing the bank, gone for the safety option. Yeah, I do like, it's pretty I good. Do like what she's chosen here. She had so many good things that could happen, the 4 ball maybe just behind the 6 or the cue ball running behind the 8. So there was a couple extras that would have been even better for Jasmine. But still, this will put some pressure on Margaret. Could scratch off the six ball in the corner. She kicking. Ten ball on the side. I think that's what the referee called. Two rails off the back. The four. Is that Mark Bosch there? Look in the audience. Is he there? Uh, I, to be honest, I don't know. Oh, oh, that was really close. How did you get between there? To be honest, I wouldn't expect Mark to be in the crowd because he usually he doesn't watch too many matches at the tournaments themselves. 
pretty focused on his own. Jim. You've spotted your doppelganger then, Mark Baster Bush. <laughs> Double Dutch. Double Dutch. <laughs> oh, you know, I wouldn't mind playing the 4 10 combo, and she could even put the angle to draw the cue ball in between the short rail and the six. So she could play two way. On the other side, you could also say no two way, just go all in because if you put it straight, you shouldn't be missing it. And I think that's what she's doing. This is to get on the hill. It's kind of a free swing, isn't it, Tim? She's doing what you said. Oh, yeah, yeah it's there. no problem. No feeling like an early ten is there. Well, definitely the early ten ball does make the game a little bit more creative. I'm I've always been a fan of this rule. Just gives, you know. Otherwise, people would have played three fouls on that four ball, or maybe go for another pretty decent run out. Now, because of the early 10, there is some doubt, you know, like, or should I maybe go for that 10 ball? And just, yeah, there is always great shots during the tournament. And the creative player sometimes does have an edge. I'm a fan. So I'm going to call on your, I'm going to call on your, I'm a fan of your language capabilities, Tim. How do you pronounce Bajana? Is it Bajana? Bajana? Sarach? Uh, Bojana, oh, yeah, Bojana. I think that would be close. Um, yeah, Saraj. Her name is actually Mr. not. Bojack. It's not so special as uh, as other players we've done before. No, <laughs> I just like to get it right if I can, you know. Well, anyway, Bojana has gone three zero up. She's on the hill in the first set against Kelly Fisher. Well, another young upcoming star, Bojana. A lot of people that already called a couple years ago that she is going to be one of the next ladies to be possible world champion. So, of course, that brings pressure. But I do actually believe she's capable of a lot of things. Okay, so yeah, another drive break. On the team. She played on the main team, didn't she, Chris? Uh, sorry, Tim. And why do I keep calling you Chris? I haven't even I don't commentated know. with Chris yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it make it it's a lot easier, Tim, and just change your name, please, to Chris. You? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that sounds a lot easier. <laughs> so, so she's push out. Now. Yeah. You know, this is again one of those breaks like so dry break and it got sc scrappy from the beginning two six nine seven ten combination is a must no other options on the seven <laughs> so even if you would give ball in hand yeah where would you start i think the only I shot i can see break. Sorry, Tim. I thought he was going to break into song then. Two six nine. The goose drank wine. The monkey chewed tobacco on the street car line. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're too young. But close. <laughs> so she's giving it she, back. Is she banking the two ball, two rails into that cluster, and the cue ball, three rails to get underneath the seven, or is she just going to try to get the two ball to block the one or any cover? No, she did. She might have opened up the two ball. And well, no cover on the one. Call. Yeah, I think she can play the 10 here. I honestly think she can play the 10 with a modicum of safety, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I like it. She's never really going to sell out on that one ball. This is for the set. So, eyes on the 10 ball. Eyes on the 10. We've already seen. One early ten in the last rack. Can she get another one? No, not oh, this time. Seven. Oh, maybe. No. But there you go. She did it get the hook. Free swing, wasn't it? Yeah, free swing. Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe played it a little bit soft if she really would have liked to attempt the 10 ball. But in the end, for her, the only thing that matters is getting the hook and possibly the first set on the board. Going here, Tim. Yeah, just looking. I do like this, but it's tough to get past the side. The side pocket point always comes into play in these shots. Oh, oh tough. Oh. It was wow, close. She's opened, up. she's opened up the two look, but she's tied up the one. Well, the two ball doesn't go. That's one of the good things for Margaret. The bad news is she moved the nine ball over next to the one. So this is an easy safety on the one ball as well. It's an easy roll up. If she can position the one ball nearby a couple other balls, maybe close to the 7-10, could win the game on three fouls. Oh, yeah, she she's played that win. good. Could even well not from there. Yes, yeah, she could even play the 110 as well if she doesn't hit this. This is uh, yeah. this is a, a must hit, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, she has to make a hit. And to be honest, she does look like she's in a trap here. Can she shoot just before the three ball on the short rail and bend the cue ball with low left? She's gonna come up. She's with trying to find a gap. Uh, there's no way, yeah, there's no way that she didn't get through that crowd. Yeah, it was such a so difficult it's shot. It's going to be another early 10, I think. And it will be the first set to Jasmine Ocean. Ball in hand, she can just line it up nice and straight, can't she? Unmissable, really. Yeah, small angle on the 10, but you can... The only thing that could make you miss this shot is because you're on the clock so you feel a little bit hurried but she's straight because of the ball in hand she should be fine yeah there it is hey and on the other side jasmine did play a smart shot with that safety on the one knowing that getting ball in hand she would win the set and she did so smart play she just made a really good catch as well. She almost knocked her bottle of drink over and she just managed to catch it in time. Well played, Jasmine Ocean. I did see that too. So it looks like Margaret did leave the arena. Of course, wants to recharge. And it's it's not really like Margaret has played horrible. It's just a couple not so great safeties. And then, of course, she did scratch twice on the break which is most of the time losing one or two racks guaranteed. Yeah, well, on the other side, if you look at the fouls, Margaret did foul six times in five racks. That's huge, isn't it, Tim? That figure there, six. Not yeah, so... You see that many fouls. Zero percent break success and then six fouls. Yeah, that's going to be tough to beat Jasmine. Of course, she can regroup in the second set, so she could come back. But she definitely needs to step up the cue ball on the break. And maybe her safety game. Just defense all around. It will be a redraw after this, so neither... Uh, player knows their opponent yet. There will be a, a redraw after this. Those ladies already through Chow Che Yu, Cheska Centino, who actually sent Jasmine to the one loss side. Bean Hung is also through, defending champion Seo Seoa. Also through to the last 32. Uh, Simi Chen as well, playing well. Christina Takach, who's been playing absolutely. Amazing lately also. Wei Chu Chen, the birthday girl from yesterday. And Yuki 
Hiraguchi, who sent Kelly Fisher to the one loss side yesterday as well. And Kelly's pulled a rack back against Rujana Saraj. She trails 3 1. Amber Chen, 3 1 up on Wang Ling Wang. And Alison Fisher has taken the lead. She's come from behind. She now leads Soldad Ayala by three racks to two. So who's been impressing you so far, Tim, in the Puerto Rico, sorry, the Puerto Rico, the rums of Puerto Rico, of course. <laughs> who's been, who's been, you know, impressing you over the first two or three days from the men and the women? Um, yeah, I think we spoke about this before. Here we got Joshua Filler, of course, always one of the players that could win the title here this week. That's guaranteed. Before starting the tournament, you can look at the draw and say, well, Joshua, Shane. On the other side, Viktor Zielinski has won two years in a row. I believe he's also through to the last 32. Yeah, so he might be able to. Um, on the other side, Roland Garcia did beat Joshua Filler in the winner's qualification. So maybe we will get a Filipino. And there is quite some Filipino players always, so that could be an option. I actually do need maybe one or two rounds more to, to call a winner. Too many options. Yeah, Carl, Carlo Biardo already qualified as well, but the very, very strong presence of the Polish players once again Playing so well, Mieszko Fortunski, Mateusz Szczegoki, also Konrad Jusician, as well as Zelensky through also Wojtek Shevchek, another one. Back to this Fortunski. one, Jasmine breaking off. Also Fortunski, Simon Kuro, former World Tambo champion, so in the juniors. And Looks like Jasmine has found something on the break. She changed the sides. She made two balls on the break, but she would have loved to have the two ball not go in on that break. Yeah, gonna have to push out, isn't she? But where to, Tim? Because this could be tricky. Well, I wouldn't look for a too tough option because the three ball is really close to the rail as well. You don't want to push out somewhere where you sell out instantly. I'd rather play a very simple shot and just buy time. Here's the break. Look at the cue ball. Almost perfect cue ball. Hit it right into the face. So good spread. Making the one. And then at the end the two ball. You're such a hard man to please. Almost perfect break. Come on, <laughs> say it, Tim. Perfect. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but if she starts breaking like this, she does ha increase her chance to win the tournament. I truly believe so. You know, it's always easy to play good when you're breaking good. But when the break is not going, sometimes it can be such a tough game. Well, she's left a combo here, 3-7. Margaret will be having a go at this. She can't refuse this one. Now it comes with such natural shape on the three and the four ball next to it. I believe you gotta go. You can play pocket speed too. You don't have to play very firm. Just play smooth draw. The pocket speed is going to help the seven ball as well. Oh, she got super tough on this three ball. That doesn't go. Can she still nick the three and get the cue ball behind the eight? That's the plan. Going for the bridge. It's a touchy little shot, this, though. Mm. 
Yeah, very much under hit. She only just caught a rail. So she's left this on, this three ball to the side pocket for Jasmine. Yeah, look at this. Most of the players are not a big fan of the bridge. It just barely got to the rail. So now Jasmine makes the three ball, four ball in the corner. So maybe two tricky shots. This is one of them. One good shot on this four ball. She could be going after another good start in this second set. extension shot clock just coming right on the the prep for the shot of course one player we haven't mentioned Tim in our names that have impressed somebody that's impressed me Albin Ocean of course Jasmine's brother he's still very much in the tournament and always at the business end playing very well oh that's a lovely stroke isn't it yeah Perfect on the five ball. Yeah, like I mentioned, we now reach the last 32 players in the men's field. And it's still tough to call a winner. This would have been completely different five, six years ago. And the same thing is slowly happening in the women's game as well. After these loser qualification matches, to call a winner from the last 16 is also not a gimme. It's a tough one. So, three real shape around the 10. Favorite to take the opening rack. And Bajana Sarach has taken the first set against Kelly Fisher. Well, that's a big thing too, at least guaranteeing that shootout. Same thing for Jasmine. Of course, you never know how that second set will go. But at least to have the shootout as a backup always feels like a relief. Just a bit of left hand spin off of this. Holding it off the rail nicely on the 10. Looking good, Tim. Yeah, she is playing quite good so far. It's not like they're missing shots. It's all about the defense. Margaret I wouldn't say the long combo. Sorry, Tim, go on. No, I was just going to say, Margaret played that long combo where she didn't get on the three ball, and after it's just another safety battle, and she's lost the safety battle. She's not missing balls. Yeah, I touched briefly on that subject about Jasmine's safety, and it really is an area of her game which she's improved, and it was a conscious, conscious effort on her part to improve her safety. And she's learned a lot off of her brother. It's something she's worked on in the last six months to a year. And it seems to be paying off. It's drawing the mistakes, isn't it, from Margaret. It's already won up at least three racks, Tim. Some good safety shots. Yeah. I mean, like I mentioned before, things can go so, so different from any moment. But from here, Jasmine looks a little stronger than Margaret, to be honest. But it ain't over till it's over. We do have a great matchup later on today. 
last 32 match in the men's. Shane Van Boning and Albin Ocean. I repeat, it's the World Nine Ball Final. Yeah, that's quite the cracker. Rail up. Well, also the thing is, if she catches the one ball thicker, look at the cue ball, cue ball going towards the rail. Most of the time, if you hit it this way, you create some cluster. Some balls are gonna try and get to that long rail. Yeah, but it's the of course five she'll and the be six, happy. Tim, and it's a perfect combo, isn't it? So it's no problem. And look where the four is as well. Look at the three. I mean, she just has to make the one and get shape on the two, you would think. Yeah, that's the good thing for this rack. Everything has worked out. But if I were her, I would definitely try to get the aiming on the break going a little bit more. But of course, you're going to take every chance you get. Absolutely. Well, I love it when I know I'm going to be commentating with you because I know I'm going to be with the break guru and you can decipher it and you really do study it and I mean that very seriously you know you you put a lot of effort into learning about the break and nine times out of ten I've got to say you're right however much it pains me to say it Tim <laughs> <laughs> no it's just the difference is you know you can win matches by breaking not too great but when you get to the cream of the crop you know if you get to the best players in the world after a break the first thing they will tell you is no I gotta work on the break gotta be a little better and this is the same thing in other aspects of the game too if they feel they're not 100% optimal in any aspect of the game they're, they will not be too satisfied they ju don't only play the game to win matches well, she might have to run into the ball here then She's going to have to run into the six or the five, is she? Or can she yeah. just slide past it? No, she can't. She's going to have to run into it. You just mentioned a great matchup, Shane Van Boning, later on. Well, there's another one. Joshua Filler will be up against another left-hander, John Moore up, and that's next on table two. So that's something to look forward to. Back to this one. Yeah, and well, she, she... With the balls being so close to the rail, the double kiss was there was a huge chance to get the double kiss that's what i'm trying to say now can only hit the right side of the five she might just have to nick the five ball and bring the cue ball all the way up to the short rail and hopefully get super close i don't think she can catch enough of the five to do more can she not send it around you don't think she can't get straight enough on it no she can't no. she's going thin I'd yeah, play the, only the bank thing here, I'd play the cross side bank. I'm crazy. Could, no, no, I mean, it, it is a shot, but especially in this stage of the match, I would, I would be patient. Yeah, good shot, double blockers for the pocket, the eight and the nine. Now, does she have the angle to roll, roll up on the eight? could also send the five ball towards the short rail and go into the long rail and stick the cue ball with the eight. It's another one. Could also nick the five ball on the left side thin and put the five ball next to the six and just wait. There's a couple options. I don't like the aggressive one, shooting the five ball off the rail off the nine in the corner. Doesn't really give any future on the six. I think she has well, all the she, five on the corner. She, I was say, she could run through this, Tim, and maybe lead the six into the top left as we look. Oh, she didn't even touch the nine ball. What a shot that I'm, is. <laughs> she did really hit that good. Just a little short on the six ball. 
Look at this for a shot. She did have half of the pocket, maybe. But she played good pocket speed. That's how the pocket did grab the ball. She needs one more good shot on this six ball. She's going for it. She's yeah, missed it. There. No, it's Go in. Off. It's in. Yeah, she played a good pace as well. She's going to level the score and stealing this rack. Because if Jasmine came a little straighter on the four, there was a 5 6 combo and all the other work would have been quite decent. Sometimes it's fractions of inches, isn't it? And she just finished the wrong side on that four ball, which meant she had to try and move the five or the six. Got the double kiss. Didn't get a decent enough safety on it. And Margaret said, thank you very much. And we're level 1-1, one, one, second set. And she'll be hoping to sort this break out, Tim, because she's not broken very well up to now. Yeah, and one thing that worked for Jasmine is going to the other side on the break but this also depends on how confident you are have you been practicing both sides on the break or just one side um, this could really change the result of the balls as well and if you just feel one side you, you can't really hit the sweet spot can't really hit him square in the face then sometimes it's worth it you know just for perspective fresh mind to swap over to the other side Jasmine, no safety returns. Just Margaret. Yeah, that's a big no. stat, isn't it? Well, the safety efficiency was a lot stronger for Jasmine in the first set and the second set. But, of course, after the five ball Margaret just fired in, the percentages would drop. She's doing the same thing, I believe. More square hit, better spread, but then again, same a little result. bit of draw. A little bit of draw on the cue ball. See, she's low in the cue ball. Yeah, very low. She, she pushes downwards, <coughs> and then there's more energy from the stack because it's 10 balls against just the cue ball. So it's always going to push the cue ball backwards. So I, I do think actually this one ball does go to the bottom right corner and it's just awkward queuing a little bit how to place your hand and stop the cue ball. Do you hook yourself behind the three ball or is it just okay on the two? We're right down the line of this. Beautiful view. And beautiful stroke. Yeah, that was a super camera angle of the perfect technique of the Austrian. Beautifully played. Cue ball seemed to run on forever, didn't it? Yeah, just that one ball really has cleared up the rack it's got to stay in line center of the table on the four ball five six next to each other maybe getting to the seven ball if you get decent on the seven ball it's a game winner done well Bajana Saraj is at it once again she's taken a 2-0 lead in the second set having won the first over Kelly Fisher so Kelly in trouble of going out it's nicely played some left hand spin taking it around the back of the six ball Gotta say, she is maybe a little straighter on the six ball, unless she can stun the cue ball out. 
But if she plays with draw, the seven ball doesn't go to that corner where the ten is. So she need to, yeah, she needed to get to this side. She got fine, maybe not too close, but she, she, in the end, was fine on the six ball. Alison Fisher keeping the Fisher name alive for now. She's taken the first set against Soledad Ayala. Yeah, some good cue ball from Jasmine. You can see she puts a lot of quality in the cue ball, never really runs very far out of position. Most of the time it's just just a bit if she does and clean run out from Jasmine perfect shot on the one ball to the two never really got the wrong angle during the whole rack another day at the office for Jasmine Ocean. I've got to say, Tim, I do like those new shirts that she's wearing. I like the flag. The way they've incorporated the flag on them. Well, I think it also we are currently in a revolution of pool where, of course, we're going to have big majors, big tournaments, big arenas, big crowds, and I also think the visual as as aspect of clothing and yeah, just the looks are all part of the show, of course. And I'm a big fan of everybody that's currently getting customized shirts and sponsors. Like, for example, Jam Up Apparel also, you know, they, they make customized shirts. And, well, there's more brands, of course. I don't know all of them. But I always think this is a good revolution for the game of pool or the sport of pool. Depends on how you look at it. I hope you agree. I certainly do. I think Paul is in a great place. And Jasmine Ocean is in a great place as well. 2-1 up and breaking in the second set. Oh, Six a ball. nice break. Yeah, look at this. Does the one pass the two, Tim? I think it does. I think it's just run on enough, didn't it? Yeah, I do think so. Sneak if past that get, two ball. I would be more worried about how to get on the two ball than actually making the one ball. Needs to get to the center of the table minimum to at least have a cut on the two. If she doesn't yeah, like it, she extension. could still roll up. She could roll up on the two ball in case it really, she really thinks she doesn't get there. But I can't imagine. She's going for it. Checking the angle. So, top right, center of the table. From this angle, that one ball looks pretty decent. Just needs the cut on the two. I think she's got it. Could go twice the short rail on this. Could also choose to hold the cue ball. This is pure preference. I would be too scared holding the cue ball because most of the time you're going to hit the two ball a little bit thicker. Some players, they have this really short, clean stroke. She has played the up oh, and down. And beautiful. This is perfect. Great shot. Now, Jasmine is one of the players, Tim, one of the few players that is nicknameless. And the WPBA recently ran a, a little competition to find her a nickname and they still didn't find one that really suited her. I wonder if you had any ideas on that. What would be a good nickname for Jasmine? Well, I would try to look at something intense or very fierce because she is a pretty fierce competitor. 
So if I would try to look for a nickname, I'm definitely looking into something yeah, by, uh, powerful and, and with quite some fire in it. What about the Ice Queen? Not Ice no, Queen, she needs Ice a little... Queen, I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, it's not like me, myself. I'm not too great at all those nicknames in general, so tough question. But I do believe something because she always she's pretty focused and she plays with a lot of fire and I think those are characteristics that need to be in that nickname if she would get one. Well, at the moment, just Jasmine is what she's known by and she's doing just enough as well. And this is going to take her to the hill. She's absolutely perfectly placed here. A little bit of a stretch. She could have done with a little bit of right hand spin on that, Tim, just to wind her the angle off of the rail. She's gone a little bit closer to the seven, hasn't she? Well, the good news is she does have a nice angle to go two rails towards the eight and the side. So stun right, maybe a little bit of draw. And this is most of the players like this for a positional shot. And in this case, was going to give her a nice angle. But yeah, this tr the stretch itself was maybe not too great. I'm sure after she wouldn't mind. Yeah, prime position. Just doesn't want to be straight on the nine ball. Well, this also shows not. confidence. Some players would have maybe slow pace, dropped the eight in and leave minimal on the nine. And Jasmine played double pace and used the extra short rail and looking very confident to get on the hill. Yeah, and no chance of deceleration, Tim. It's there. It just keeps the stroke nice and fluid. And then it goes and she is on the hill. This could be a 4-1, 4-1, especially the way she's breaking because she really has broken very well. Now, let me give you some latest scores. Kelly fighting back in her match against Ujana after the Serbian took the first set. It's now 2-1 to Ujana in the second. Another one on a fight back is Elu Kibaroglu. She's a set down and 2-1 down to Silviana Lu. Christina's Lateva, after leading all the way through the first set, has lost it to Chihiro Kawahara. And Kelly Fisher, sorry, Alison Fisher, representing the United States now. She'll be teaming up with Shane Van Boning, won't she, in the Scotch doubles, the mixed Scotch doubles coming up later in the week. Really looking forward to that one, Tim. There really is some great, great pairings isn't there in that and there's one of them there she'll be playing with brother Albin and we've got Fedor and Christina we've got Margaret and Tyler Chao Che Yu and Chang Jung Lin and Wei Chu Chen and Ko Ping Yi what a tournament that's going to be well one thing that's going to be interesting is for many years probably many fans have been wondering how would Jasmine and Albin play together and now we actually get to see it and I'm, I'm curious too oh, nice yeah, square hit see makes them. Ball. did see them in the world teams of course didn't we pairing up in the scotch doubles but that's not actually a long match is it it's only short races in that well, that's only one race to four. Now it's actually a couple sets. And look at this. If you find a way to make the one ball, I wouldn't mind trying to wing at something. The seven nine is closed. And if you make the one in the side, she might be done making a two ten combination for the win. Depending where she lands as well, Tim, she might even be able to just play the Karen if she doesn't want to do too much with the, the cue ball. There you see. That 
that's the important bolt. Well, she could also just play safe and wait till she get ball in hand and then get it done. If she gets underneath it, then no. Okay, well, this story is going to get a little till because the one ball will be easy to hit for Margaret. And it feels for quite a bit that it feels like I haven't seen Margaret for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes for quite some time. How does she feel now yeah, after she, sitting in the chair? When she does come to the table, she's facing a hook again and she's got to get this safe tin. Well, she's missed it by a long way. Well, that is a surprise. Looking puzzled. Yeah, but she doesn't really get much table time. Then the only shots she gets are sensitive kicks. You know, she has to hit the right side and she just doesn't feel the table that much anymore, I believe, at this point. Now Jasmine looks to be playing a similar shot like she did earlier this match. Send the one ball down table for a future 110 combination. And if she can glue the cue ball with the six or the four, she might set herself up to finish the match. I just wondered if she might consider playing the one ball here into that corner and draw back for the for the two, for the two ten, Karen, not not combo, but the yeah. Karen. Yeah, the Karen is quite a, some cut still, so maybe it's a little bit awkward now. She didn't get as good as she did before. Still left the one rail kick over the long rail, which Margaret has to take on. She's called the ten, I think. Is she going two rails? No, I would, I would guess she can still hit the right long rail and go one rail, possibly two rails off the short rail. Could make the one. And if you don't make the one, there is five balls you can get lucky behind. This looks a little bit wide to me. Don't come across it and scratch off of the face of it. She's missed it a long way again. Yeah, it so did look wide really from the struggling. beginning. So that's two fouls. Now, of course, you know, I, I do like the carom. It's not like the carom doesn't go. But it's not a hanger like the 210 was earlier in the game. Yeah, but if you look at the 7 and the... Well, she did get... I gotta say, from here, I really wouldn't mind it. I think she put the cue ball... It's almost ball in hand shape on this carom on the 10. Unless she really likes to... Do more work on the 7 9. She's gonna play shape from the 2 to the 3 ball to open up the 7 9 and then hopefully get something on the 4. And no. Is there a 7 9 combo? I'm a little bit surprised by the choice she just made. Not sure she can get to the angle she needs to make the the combo, Tim, because the rail's in the way, isn't it, if you know what I mean? Can't really get to the edge of the seven that you need to get to. Yeah, that's why she's played another safety, and that's quite an intelligent shot, actually, because now Margaret is going to have to move that seven nine by the looks of it. I do see a very creative Maybe. shot, though. Rail first, catch the right side of the three ball, send the three into the seven, and carry the ten in. Carry the ten in. Wow, well, good call, good call, good call, almost. Well, she's tied the four up now, look. There's another cluster. Well, she did catch the three ball a little thinner. That's why the three ball came out, and maybe a little bit firm. <laughs> But the idea was there. And yeah, what do you play? If she plays the three ball in the corner, could play a stop shot safety behind the nine. Stop on the three and the stop on the four. 
Oh, safety on the three ball. You know, Jasmine is actually playing a good match. She is really making sure Margaret does not get in stroke at all. Sorry, Mark. I forgot what I was going to say. Now, Tim, it's my age. Don't worry about it. It was nothing important, I'm sure. <laughs> Not a horrendous re result on this three ball. Make the three and maybe take a gamble. A low right into the four nine. If you catch almost any ball, you can get lucky. If you don't, you can play a safety on the four. Well, she could possibly even make the four ball here if she catches the nine quite thick. Forward. Yeah, I don't Need didn't feel luck. going forward. She did get the luck. Well, this isn't easy now. Very thin. If she takes it on, there's a safety on. Cue ball over behind that little cluster of balls. Yeah, top left. Oh, I don't like this. She could have banked the three ball over down table and get the cue ball behind the six and create more distance. This is a kick shot which Jasmine should be hitting. And if she catches the right side of the three ball, a lot of good things can happen. Yeah, could flick off the three ball, couldn't she? Back over to the kind of area is now Tim. That's a possibility. Just like that. And this this is exactly what I meant. Okay, she might not have gotten the full hook. She might have, actually. And this is just... Margaret gave Jasmine the chance to get this luck. Or luck. It's a combination of luck and skill, of course. Oh, the cue ball. Oh, well, it's, when it's not your day, it's not your day. It's been a story of fouls, hasn't it, from Margaret Pfeffel over Steyer in this particular match. And it all started in the very first rack. And she, she scratched off the break. And we counted six fouls, Tim, up to the one point. That's at least seven, maybe eight. Yeah, just six ball. It's the only thing I would be looking at from here. Did she get far enough? I don't think she's got far enough on this four ball. Yeah, this is... It's going to be awkward. Because the six is probably at the worst spot on the pool table. And... Could play a safety behind the nine, just wait. Yeah, it's going to be another safety, isn't it? More of the same. Well, I'm more imp impressed by the fact that she didn't play the safety on the four. She did call the bank shot on the six ball, and she's definitely looking to get the cover with the nine eight if she doesn't make it. Oh. oh I don't I don't know how she thought she was gonna avoid the scratch there. I really don't. It looked as if it was impossible to avoid the way she was playing it. She's puzzled as as much as I am on that one, Tim. But how could she avoid that? Well, she was trying to play and the soft pace to get the six ball safe in mind and enough draw. And she didn't really put enough draw on it just worked as a stop shot and well that was not enough to avoid the scratch for sure so a little straight More on seven do think she can stun the cue ball still a little bit off the rail for the eight in the bottom right corner in this view so 
a chance to close the gap. She really hit that, didn't she? She's gone a little bit too far back into the centre of the table, if anything. But it's still on. Shouldn't be a problem. Just Cubal going near the nine, though, now. She touched the nine, didn't she? It's okay though. Nicely on it, probably into the side pocket. It's either played to the corner pocket and take the more cut on the ten ball, or cut the nine ball in the side and get more straight on the ten. Oh wow! wow. Can you believe this? That's why I didn't like that, Tim. She, because she was trying to steal a little bit of angle to stay as straight on the ten as she could. I, I, I liked it in the side. Maybe I'm wrong, but natural cue ball position was taking it over for the ten. And that's a huge miss. It's been one of their matches for Margaret Fefilova, Steyer, and you feel a little bit for and look oh, at this. Look at the cue ball. Oh. This is turning into a really strange match, isn't it? That was unbelievable. Yeah, she just caught that short wheel first on the nine. That's how it scratched. And wow, big swings back and forth. Hey, on the other side, if I were Margaret, I would tell myself, hey, you know, you, you got a little luck. I'm right in it to still get through the second set and go to a shootout. You know, you gotta boost yourself up a little bit instead of saying, well, I got lucky, which some people also do. Oh, look at the fouls, Tim. Just look at the amount of fouls in this. There's 12 fouls by two players. I mean, it's it's something unusual to see. I think I think it's more, isn't it? Oh no, well, it twelve. Says, right. Yeah, I think it's twelve. Yeah, but still, 12, I mean, twelve. <laughs> I mean, you're begging for more. I I don't know. Yeah, come on, <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like I said, it's not like both players are missing balls all over the place. It's not like they're playing horrible. It's just that. Yeah, I feel the vibe, the safety vibe. Jasmine is definitely ruling in that department at this point. Well, Margaret about to break. Let's get them stats out the way. We don't want to see them. They're horrible to look at, aren't they, from the player's point of view? Where's the one ball going? In it goes. She's made a ball, Tim. Yeah, no future on this two ball, but at least we've got an open layout. So it, you would expect only a safety battle on the two ball and a potential run out after for, well, the player that wins the safety battle. May just push this two ball past the five. Can't see what else she can play here really, Tim. Could just play the two ball to the short rail and try to get the five ball in between. She's not going to get the distance, but at least keep the pressure on. She can kick this one round from behind, I think. And calls the side, so that tells us she can get in behind this two ball. Well, she did call the side just in case. I'm sure she's not trying to make the two ball, because she would be hooked behind the five on the three ball. So it was it just in case. She hit it good. And I think that nudge on the six might have helped her. Did she leave that two ball? It's close. Thankfully, the six ball has gone into combination for the nine, so that's not really tied up. 
So the table's still well and truly open. It's all about this two ball and it's on. No, so it wasn't, oh, it wasn't on, on. But in my opinion, Margaret's played a very good shot here. Some people wouldn't acknowledge this kind of shot is there because they're only focused on making that two ball. So they're going to mess, say, and jump and do whatever. Instead, she's played a good, strong shot, got the cover behind the five. And kicking two rails on this two ball, there is a scratch off the back of the two. So Jasmine's got to make sure she catches it thick from the back. Similar to this, has bought some time. That young lady there looked down and out of this year's rums of Puerto Rico, Las Vegas Women's Open until that bizarre scratch from the nine ball from Jasmine. So another safety shot here. If you can win good. this battle, they're in the open. And that's not a very good shot though. She's caught the four ball. Yeah, I was thinking maybe to roll up on the four ball, but then she chose to go for more distance, which I don't mind. But she is not gonna like what she's gonna face after. Jasmine's gonna cut the two ball into the six. Two is gonna stay there, possibly behind the nine. And there is two different paths to bring the cue ball. Just like this, but Jasmine has under hit the cue ball. I was expecting her to get behind the 10-7 as well. So it's not not horrible for Margaret. Could have been a worse look. Not saying Jasmine played a horrible safety shot. I'm more saying it could have been maybe 5% better and could have locked up Margaret. It's the small little details, especially on this extreme level, that sometimes do make the difference. Oh, oh just got a glimpse. How does she find a glimpse the there of the crowd? Yeah, really enjoying this enthralling battle. And as we see, another scratch in the side pocket off of the three. Well, I'm oh, just so Tim, surprised. Look at the three ten. I'm just so surprised she was able to catch the two ball so thin. She almost cut it into that corner. That was the only way how to scratch off that ball in the side. Yeah, and there is a 310 mark. Yeah, and she just saw, placed her hand in exactly where she wants the cue ball to make the 310. So this is a really big chance now. Run out is a possibility as well, of course. Yeah, she's going for the run out. Nicely played. Pressure's on, though. She knows if she misses Tim, it will be hill hill. So she really needs to make the most of this and get this match over with. She had it won in the last rack. Good shape. The four ball staying away from the seven could go backwards, low right in between the ten and the seven. Could also go forward, and most of the players they don't like the bridge. I mentioned this before, so some of them they play very basic while going for the bridge. Did it well. Oh, she's good shot there, good speed especially. Which is most of the times the scary thing with the bridge. Tough to feel the speed. Q is not gliding over your bridge hand. It's gliding over a piece of plastic most of the time. Yeah, and rarely do you see pool players getting their elbow up parallel to the, the bed of the cloth. It's always kind of hanging down, which isn't ideal technique when you're using the bridge. But she did play a decent shot 
and now surely she can get over the line here and book her place. Yeah, it's a real shame. That's why it's a long wheel. How is the speed? Okay, maybe a little bit further on the seven ball than she wanted to. If she was straight, could have played a stop shot and go up table off the eight. Can she still float forward? Or does she have to go into the long rail and come back out? If you can float the seven ball, I would always try this. Yeah, nicely done. Was so depending on the angle she had. So now, I think two rail position, short rail, long rail up to the nine. This makes sure you stay off the long rail. Just three just balls her elbow mark. here. Tim, you see that elbow? It's just down a little bit. I'd like to see that just up a little bit more. I mean, it's kind of oh, flirting again with the side pocket. We've seen.